There are cases when we cannot evaluate integrals precisely to find their exact value. For example, if we cannot find an antiderivative, then we cannot use the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate the integral. Or if we only have a discrete set of values of the function, but no formula, for example, when we collect data from an experiment, then we don't have a function to integrate. So in these cases, instead of finding the integral um, exactly, we will numerically integrate to approximate the integral, that is the integral from a to b of f of x dx, the precise value of which we denote by capital I. So uh, the goal is to find the area under the graph of the function, um, which um, uh, is illustrated here. So it, in, in cases where we don't even have the graph of the function, so the values of the function at all points, only at, at a discrete set, or uh, we don't even know the precise value, we, the whole point is to approximate this value, which here happens to be 9.8 exactly. Now to uh, come up with different methods, it's uh, a good first step to go back to the definition of integrals, so them being the limits of Riemann sums, and think about how uh, we could choose these sample points, uh, set rules for choosing these sample points so that we get good approximations to the integral. Uh, one possibility is that, uh, that we often do is to take the left end points of each subinterval, evaluate the function there to get the heights of the corresponding rectangles, and that way to get uh, what's called the left end point approximation to the integral. Similarly, one could use uh, the right end points of subintervals to get uh, the right end point approximation to the integral. And in between the two, any choice of sample points uh, would work. Um, a commonly used uh, approximation is what you've already seen in the video on integrals, is to use the midpoint of each subinterval. So this gives rise to the midpoint rule, where we take, for in this case, just the, the interval a, b, find its midpoint, so that would be the average of the two uh, numbers a and b, a plus b over 2, evaluate the function there to get the height of the rectangle, so that would be f of a plus b over 2, and multiply it by the uh, length of the base, that is the length of the interval, that is b minus a. Now this is for just one rectangle, and of course the idea is that we subdivide the interval a, b into smaller and smaller uh, subintervals um, to have more and more rectangles, but in just this simple case, n equals 1, we can express the same thing using the uh, subdivision points xi and uh, the length of the subintervals delta x in the, in the following way. So we can use uh, the average of the, of the endpoints of the subintervals and the function evaluated at these average points in these uh, midpoints. So this is the same expression as before, just expressed in terms of the xi's and uh, the delta x. So as we um, increase the number of subintervals and therefore the number of rectangles, we get a better and better approximation. And when we have n uh, subintervals, this is the formula um, that gives us um, the approximation to the integral. This is the midpoint rule. This midpoint rule is quite good, surprisingly good. So when we double the number of rectangles, the number of subintervals, then the error that we are making um, goes down by a factor of four in each step. So, um, but of course, it's not only rectangles that we can use to approximate the area under the curve. Another commonly used approximation uses trapezoids. So this is called the trapezoidal rule, where I again illustrate it first in, um, for the case when, when we only have one of these. So we get these trapezoids by connecting the points on the graph of the function. And uh, the area of one trapezoid like this is basically uh, um, the base times the average height of the trapezoid. So that's what this formula expresses. We take the average of the endpoint values, f of a plus f of b over 2, times the base of the trapezoid, b minus a. So this formula expresses the fact that the area of a trapezoid like this is, the, is equal to the area of a rectangle that has the same base, but the height is, the, um, is halfway in between the uh, endpoints uh, of the trapezoid, of, of the heights at the endpoints. Now, again, this uh, formula can be expressed um, uh, equivalently using these endpoint values y, i. In uh, this way, we take the average of the endpoint values, and that's the height of uh, the rectangle whose area is the same as the 
area of this trapezoid and the base is delta x. When we have n of these trapezoids, so more and more of them, the formula modifies like this into this sum. Um, and if we plug in uh, for these average y values the expression that it is xi minus 1 plus x, sorry, yi minus 1 plus yi over 2, plugging that into the formula, taking the factor of a half outside to have delta x be divided by 2, we get this formula, which tells us that the trapezoidal rule gives us an approximation where we have delta x over 2 multiplying the sum of um, values of the function, where the endpoint values of the interval a, b are with a multiple of 1, and the in-between values uh, have a multiple of 2. Um, now, instead of rectangles or trapezoids, uh, the next uh, step would be to not use straight lines but, but to use quadratic functions, parabolas, to approximate and this gives rise to Simpson's rule which requires us to have an even number of subintervals so here I'm demonstrating it uh, for two subintervals um, then we have three points on the graph of the function above uh, each of the subdivision points and to these three points we can fit a unique parabolic arc and the area under which can be computed using integrals and will be found to be this expression. So the, again, this expression can be expressed in terms of the y values um, like this, as a simple looking expression. And when we apply this to more and more subintervals, the number of which needs to be even, then the approximation gets better and better. And indeed, um, for a general uh, number of subinterval n that is even, this is the formula uh, of Simpson's rule where we have delta x over 3 so multiplying the sum where the, we have the endpoint values um, the values of the function at a and b and then the in-between values the odd indexed values uh, get a multiple of 4 and the uh, even indexed in-between values get multiples of 2. Now uh, this Simpson's rule is the best out of all of the approximations I've showed you so far because doubling the um, number of subintervals in each step leads to a decrease in the error by a factor of 16, that is 2 to the 4. Um, so that's why this approximation, as you see, with 8 subintervals is so far the best uh, we've seen. Now, now that we have seen numerical integration and it, the various rules and methods, let's apply them to an example. Use the left hand point approximation with n equals 4, that is 4 subintervals, to estimate the integral from 1 to 2 of 1 over x dx. Give your answer around it to two, uh, 3 decimal places. So before you calculate it, let's just set this up. So we have this integral, which we can actually evaluate and find the, the value exactly. So the integral from 1 to 2 of 1 over x dx, as we know, an antiderivative is the natural logarithm of x, so the fundamental theorem of calculus can be used to obtain the value for this integral as the difference of uh, values um, uh, of the antiderivative, so that is the natural logarithm of 2 minus the natural, natural logarithm of 1, but that's just 0, therefore this is the value, the exact value, and approximately it's uh, 0 0.693, that's uh, to three decimal places, so the function here that we are integrating uh, f of x is 1 over x. The interval over which we integrate, so the interval a, b now is the integral between 1 and 2. And I, I say that the subdivision, the number of intervals should be 4. That means that delta x, the length of each subinterval, is the length of that interval a, b divided into 4 equal parts. So one-fourth or 0.25. Now having this set up means that the subdivision points along the x-axis will uh, be x0 that is a that is 1, x1 that is uh, x0 plus 1 so delta x so that's 1.25, x2 is 1.5, x is 1.75 and x4 is equal to b is 2 and these are the x values the corresponding values of the function the y values will be y0 
that is f evaluated at x0 is the reciprocal of 1 and similarly y1 is the reciprocal of 1.25 y2 is the reciprocal of 1.5 y3 is the reciprocal of 1.75 and finally uh, y4 is the reciprocal of 2 so that's just a half now with these x and y values now you are uh, ready to set up the left endpoint approximation and calculate it to three decimal places so pause the video and input your answer in the box okay i hope you paused it and have found this value so this uh, this approximation l4 is equal to uh, take, evaluating the function at the left endpoints of each subinterval so that's uh, y0 y2 y1 y2 and y3 each multiplied by delta x so it's uh, these values multiplied by delta x the four, uh, first four which is approximately uh, 0 0.76 Let's look at the next question. Use now the right endpoint approximation with n equals four to estimate the same integral as before. So pause the video and input your answer rounded to three decimal places in the box. Hope you paused it and have found this value to be 0 0.635. So R4, the right endpoint approximation with four subintervals means that we are taking the right endpoints of each subinterval. So we start with Y1, then we add y2, y3, and y4. These are the right endpoints of each subinterval being multiplied by delta x. So this is approximately uh, equal to 0 0.635. Okay, let's look at the next question. Use now the midpoint rule with n equals 4 to approximate the same integral. So pause the video and input your answer rounded to three decimal places in the box. Hope you paused it and have found this value. So for the midpoint rule, we need to evaluate the function at the midpoints of each subinterval. So this would be, and I'll just write out the, the sum for four subintervals would mean evaluating the function at uh, the midpoints. So that is x0 plus x1 over 2 plus f at x1 plus x2 over 2 plus f at x2 plus x3 over 2 plus f at x3 plus x4 over 2 all multiplied by delta x so this expression in fact is taking the reciprocals of the midpoints so that would be 1.1 um, 25 then 1 over 1 375 plus 1 over 1 675 plus 1 over 1.875 all multiplied by uh, 0 0.25 so this is approximately equal to 0 0.691 let's look at the next question Use now the trapezoidal rule with n equals 4 to approximate the same integral as before. So pause the video, calculate your answer, round it to three decimal places and input that in the box. Okay, I hope you paused it and have found this value. Now for the trapezoidal rule, we need the average y values. So um, we are averaging these values. Let me introduce the notation that we had before. So yi will denote y yi bar will denote yi minus 1 plus yi divided by 2 so this is the average of the y values and then uh, the trapezoidal rule with n equals 4 gives us the approximation that is uh, y1 bar plus y2 bar plus y3 bar plus y4 bar all multiplied by delta x or uh, as you've seen you can also write this using the y values as follows uh, y0 plus twice y1 plus twice y2 plus twice y3 plus y4 all multiplied by delta x over 2 
either way when you plug in the values and calculate this number you get uh, 0.697 let's look at the next question finally use simpson's rule with n equals 4 to approximate the same integral so calculate your answer around it to three decimal places and input that in the box okay i hope you pause the video and inputted that number so for simpson's rule we are using parabolic arcs but the formula simply tells us to take these values and in the following expression y0 plus 4 times y1 plus 2 times y2 plus uh, y 4 times y3 plus y4 all multiplied by delta x over 3. Now this expression when computed gives us 0 0.693 Three, which to three decimal places is the best approximation to ln of two so far. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.